Welcome, everyone, to another Fish Report Live, the holiday edition of Fish Report Live. My name is Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis over there. And back in our sound room, we have TK and Heavy D. I think they started celebrating the holidays a little bit early back there tonight, Ken. But, you know, speaking of Christmas, the only thing that ranks right up there with Christmas for me, maybe just a little bit, is high school basketball. And we're talking boys and girls high school basketball both tonight, aren't we? Yes, we are, Craig. It's that time of season. It's the holiday season. It's high school boys basketball season. It's high school girls basketball season. We've got them both for you tonight, Craig. We're going over to Jackson Center tonight to talk to first-year head girls basketball coach Scott Elkert. Uh, coach Elkert has won his last two games for the Tigers. He's got his uh, Lady Tigers playing good basketball right now. They'll be coming into Rushi's Clercy Nabo Gymnasium for a big contest tomorrow night. As well as Craig heading a little bit west of town, going over to Versailles to talk some Mac basketball. Head boys basketball coach Scott McEldowney along with his senior star Kyle Arns back from a one-year injury, Craig. Great to see Kyle back on the floor, and it was a great interview we had with Kyle the other night. Yeah, a lot of Scots to talk to. Uh, you mentioned Scott McEldowney at Versailles, and you mentioned Scott Elkert at, at Jackson Center. Actually, we're talking to the other Scott at Jackson Center, Scott <laughs> Dosek. So uh, too many Scots to keep track of tonight. But, yeah, we'll be talking girls basketball with Coach Dosek over there. But uh, before we get to all that, Ken, just like we do every week, have a weekly trivia question. Last week you asked me a Fort Army basketball question. Tonight you're asking me a Jackson Center basketball question, right? Jackson Center girls basketball, Craig. They've won a couple state championships over there in girls basketball they've had a great program over there for many many years back in 1995 craig the jackson center tigers won a perfect 28 and 0 season capturing a state championship who is the head coach of that basketball team who is the head coach of the 1995 jackson center lady, lady tigers perfect 28 and 0 season was it scott McEldowney, roger McEldowney, jerry Harmon? Or Greg Gooding. Okay, we're, we're talking to Scott McEldowney at Versailles tonight. He's also he's, he's a possible answer. He's to a the, possible answer to this question tonight. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I think I got a pretty good idea what this one is, and, and I actually got a good story that I'll tell you at the end of the show. Uh, if you're watching us on the Fish Report Live page and you think you know the answer to this, just scroll down. You can answer the trivia question there. Check the results out. If you're watching us on NK Telco Cable TV channel three we will have the, the that answer and my story for you at the end of the show so uh, let's get things started ken we're going to start out tonight talking some girls basketball talking some scal girls basketball and like we've done the last several weeks let's go through the standings see where we're at this week and see how they've changed from last week to this week well, Craig, Fort Lauderdale remains atop the standings. They were up there last week tied with Houston. Uh, this week they're, they're alone at sitting at 4-0. Uh, Houston dropped a spot after suffering a loss to Rushi. Uh, they're sitting at 3-1. and Rushi also right in the hunt at 2-1. and And you can see Jackson Center is as well at 2-1. and So a uh, big game there tomorrow night between those two teams. Uh, Anna fell the furthest uh, over the week. They dropped two spots actually down to the number five spot at 1-2. and two. And Bakken's and Farallon both looking for their first league win Craig but I promise you one of them's going to get it this week because uh, they just go head to head here real soon that, so that's right yeah and another big game tomorrow night actually I think it's a big game is the Anna Houston game uh, we had coach Greg Ward from Houston on the show last week talk to him I understand you actually got over to Houston last week watched the Wildcats over there and they're a pretty good team aren't they yes they are Craig uh, they can really fill it up from the outside Rushi built a nice lead on Houston I think they built the lead to 15 16 points but uh, Houston came storming back, hitting a few three-pointers, getting the ball inside. They got a nice freshman in a monitor girl over there. And uh, I tell you what, Houston and Coach Greg Ward, uh, they'll be a team to be reckoned with. They're going to win a lot of basketball games. So that was a good win for the Raiders last Saturday over in Houston. Yeah, and they're going up against an Anna team that's got Kayla Bensman, of course, one of the best players in the county. Anytime you go up against uh, her and, and those Anna Rockets, you're going to get a battle. So, again, I expect that to be a good game. Yes, for sure. Uh, Anna plays extremely hard. They make it a 90-foot basketball game, Craig. They play all 
all the way up and down the floor. A lot of defensive pressure, and uh, this year is no different for the Rockets. And like you said, when you get Caleb Bensman on the court, a lot of good things are going to happen for the Rocket team. All right, and the other big game that we're looking forward to is the Jackson Center Tigers visiting our Rushi Raiders. And it basically, can a, a lot of the same players last year that played played against each other. Uh, you know, the last time they played was back in January when Jackson Center visited Rushi. Uh, a, a good game. Rushi escaped with, a, I, I believe, a 49-46 to 46 victory, so a good battle. The only thing that's really changed between these two teams, the biggest thing that's changed, is the head coach of the Jackson Center Tigers. They have Scott Dosek over there now leading them. Uh, we're actually happy to have him live on the phone right now. Coach Dosek, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you very much this evening for having me on air with you. All right. Well, listen, I uh, I just mentioned you as the, the, the new head coach over there, but uh, you're not exactly new to coaching. Why don't you explain to our viewers out there how long you've been doing this and, and uh, what uh, what got you to the job over there at Jackson Center? Well, you're, you're, first off, you're correct. I'm not new to this. I've uh, been doing uh, basketball at Jackson Center in some capacity for the last 21, 22 years. i uh, done about everything other than having a head coaching job, um, you know, Reason I took the job this year, you know, uh, like you said, uh, Coach Qualman, uh ended up resigning and ended up getting a teaching job up north. Uh, and with a little child uh, that she had this summer, she just couldn't fit everything together. So she had to give up uh, the job at Jackson. Um, one reason I took the job is that uh, just from what girls uh, we had coming back. I mean, we had, uh, when Coach Qualman took it over uh, three years ago, she asked me to switched back over to the girls program to help her out and at that time we had uh, four great young ladies uh, that are now seniors and I just uh, thought that uh, to uh, finish their career out I would still be a part of their uh, season in their uh, high school basketball career. All right, well, Ken and I, we talked about your team uh, uh, several times last year, and I think we kind of always said the same thing, that they were a young group of girls and that they could surprise some people. Well, this year they're all back, and, and, and you've won your last two games. I don't think you're surprising people anymore, but uh, uh, can you tell me, has there been any, have you sensed any change in expectations from last year to this year? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, after the summer, uh, these ladies had, uh, you know, they started, we had a little bit of success this summer, um, you know, that we wasn't used to on the basketball floor. Um, you know, they started believing in themselves, and, you know, they were thinking, you know, hey, you know, we can uh, do some things on the basketball floor that uh, we haven't done here at Jackson Center for a while. You know, and last year I know we were 12-12, uh, twelve and 12, um, and so we're hoping to build on that. And uh, like you said earlier, you know, we may not be young, but then again we are still young. You know, we start one senior three sophomores and or three juniors and a sophomore and then uh, bring a senior and a sophomore off the bench coach hi this is ken francis and a lot of your hi, players ken. have experienced a lot of success in other sports uh Obviously, you had a great fall volleyball season. Your girls went 24-1 and volleyball. Uh, Coach Metz uh, brought the girls. They were ranked number one in the state, I believe, at the end of the year. Uh, so those girls, obviously, a lot of them are on your basketball team. You've got a senior star, Nicole Fote, who's uh, been the state track meet a few times. How does the success of these other sports carry these girls and help them on the hardwood? Um, well, first off, correct that Nicole is still only a junior. She, she's a, no, not a senior. She's what? a junior. One more year um, of her, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, you know, uh, to be honest with you, I think it's a little bit too early to give for me to give you an honest uh, opinion how this is all rolled over. Um, you know, um, I know the staff and I, you know, have a lot of faith and belief in these girls, but I just think that, you know, they haven't experienced the success on the hardwood, so they, you know, to uh, to believe in success, you got to start believing in yourself. You know, I think sometimes these girls are a little hesitant instead of just getting out there and doing, you know, what we're teaching them and, you know, doing the right thing. And, you know, they think about it before, you know, they do it instead of just going out there and playing basketball. Let's talk a moment about sophomore uh, super athlete you've got over there in Cassie Meyer. Uh, she's one of the better programs, one of the better athletes in the Shelby County League. Again, still just a sophomore. 
Uh, early in the season, you were once quoted as saying, uh, once she gets in the mode, she's going to be an extremely good basketball player. What is the mode, and is she there yet? Um, well, the mode, right now she's not in the mode yet. Uh, she's still battling a little bit of injuries that she had through the volleyball year. Um, you know, she's still, I don't know, she's probably only probably about 80% in my mind, and I don't know if she'd be able to make it through the season, you know, to get a 100%, but I'm hoping that. Um, she has a lot of potential. You know, you're talking about a 5'11 uh, young lady that, you know, can dribble the basketball. Uh, she can defend, you know. She can shoot the ball, you know. Um, and I'll go back to my experience and my years of coaching. Um, you know, I've had uh, one other – a uh, young lady out of the Meyer family, which is uh, Kristen Haverstadt. And in my mind, she has as much ability and as potential as Kristen did back in the uh, 01, 02. Well, I've seen her on the volleyball yeah. court before, and I'll have to agree with you. She's an extremely athletic young lady. Uh, let's yes, talk. A, let's talk a little bit about your upcoming game uh, tomorrow night or Thursday night again. Yeah, tomorrow night against Rushi. Uh, should be a great game. It's at Rushi. Uh, what do you expect from the Raiders? Uh, what do your Tigers need to do well to win that game? Um, well, I expect them to give me the pressure they uh, that they have uh, last year. Um, I know they threw pressure at us. The one three one full court trap. Just trying to throw my young young ladies off. Uh, off key, um, I expect them to uh, throw the ball inside to Wilson and uh, Sherman. Uh, try to beat us that way, and uh, then try to get out on the break and you know try to get some easy buckets. Try to get uh, their shooters some uh, good open looks. Um, you know, my expectation is you know hopefully that we come ready to play. You know, we uh, know that we have to be at the top of our game. You know, to uh, beat them, um, I believe the game's uh, very important for us since that we already have one league loss uh, that we lost opening night to Houston by 14, um, and with Anna and uh, Fort Laramie still on our schedule for the first round. Um, you know, if we want to uh, have any uh, chance or desire to uh, win a league title. All right, Coach. Hey, listen, one more question and we'll let you go. And we, we couldn't let you go without asking you a Christmas question. Now we got Christmas coming up next week. And of course, Santa Claus is going to be coming to Shelby County. So uh, from a coaching perspective, tell me tell me one thing uh, you're, you're hoping for for Christmas this year. Well, first off, your fans ain't going to like it, what I want in my stocking, but I would like to see a 5-2 <laughs> and two record. <laughs> I bet well, you do. Well, good luck, and, uh, you know, we wish you the merriest Christmas over there in Jackson Center. Uh, I thank you very much. You guys have a Merry Christmas, too, and I hope to uh, run into you tomorrow night. Uh, we'll see you there, and good luck to you. Hey, thank you very much. See you, Coach. Bye. Bye. All right, that was the head coach of the Jackson Center Tigers, Scott Dosek. And, and again, Ken, I, you know, that they are, they are a little younger than we thought. Nicole's not a senior. She's a junior, and, and uh, I expect them to bring it uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, you know, they've been, they're a very athletic team, Craig. Uh, like I said, you, don't, you can't be athletic and, and do as well as what they've done in other sports. Yeah. And uh, we've seen them on the basketball floor last year. They're very competitive, and uh, I expect nothing less uh, tomorrow night from Scott, Coach, uh, coach Dosek's team. Yeah, that's going to wrap it up for our girls' basketball talk. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk some boys' basketball, including a little SCAL basketball and a little MAC basketball and an interview with Coach Scott McEldowney over there at Versailles and a star senior Kyle Arns. Stay there. We'll be right back. Well, I'm digging on you. I'm digging on you. What's poor boy to do? You got me acting a fool. I'm digging on you. I'm digging on you. Just can't get my eyes off of you, girl You don't know me You don't know I'm looking Oh, how I wish to be part of your world Well, I'm digging on you I'm digging on you What's for more to get me out to 
of Fish Report Live. And before the break, we were talking some girls basketball, including uh, that interview with Jackson Center coach Scott Dosak. Uh, Ken, I was asking him what exactly he wanted for Christmas from Santa Claus. Kind of made me uh, wonder maybe what the guys back in our sound room would want for Christmas. So I want to go back there and, and check in with the guys. I think we got a little of uh, Santa's helpers back there, it looks like. But this ought to be good. <laughs> guys, uh, give it to me. TK, I'll start out with you. Anything special uh, you're looking for for Christmas? Oh, a lot of things on my list, but I've already got the top item which is Mark Cantwell's latest release, release <laughs> Digging on You. Uh, Y'all just heard the uh, title track there during our uh, commercial break. So this just came out officially on Tuesday. We already have copies. I think <coughs> Mark's family and the Fish Report crew have it. Uh, Y'all know Mark from all the music he does for us, yep. our theme song and our commercial break song. So, yep, Mark Cantwell's Digging on You. So go to <laughs> markcantwell.com if you like that music, which I'm sure you do, and pick yourself up a copy because it's good that'd make a, g a good stocking stuffer guys yes it would about 10 bucks i think is that what it's it's oh. running for the cd i would say 10 bucks 10 put bucks. that baby in your stocking well worth the money spent we, right we there we appreciate the uh, singer songwriter mr cantwell giving them to us yeah we got it before the rest of the public can't beat that's that. right how about you heavy d anything special you're looking for for christmas you know we really can't sing or dance um no we can't like like mark cantwell can but we gave it a try and we had a viewer request that we do a little shaky, shaky, Christmas shaky, <laughs> and we gave it our best shot. And um, you want to show that now, Craig? Oh boy, this this is gonna be good. This yeah. ought to be good. Let's we we uh, we did our best Christmas jig that we could. This one goes out to Kate Sherman. Kate, thanks for the recommendation. Let's see what the Fish Report team has for you. Was the, um, that was good. That was a South Park rendition of Fish Report, I think. <laughs> How many times did we actually have to rehearse that before we nailed that? Uh, th those guys were pretty happy. I don't know. They kept smiling. <laughs> I think we better get back to talking about basketball. We Karen. better. We're, yeah. we're a lot better at that than we are dancing. Yeah, we better stick to our I regular think. jobs. All right, Ken. Well, listen. Let's let's talk some more basketball, and let's 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 talk a little guys basketball. Uh, we talked about girls SCAL basketball before the break. Let's talk a little guys SCAL basketball, and actually a big matchup. We talked to uh, 
to last week we talked to Corey Britton over there at Fort Army. The week before that, I believe we talked to Coach Brumagin over at Rushi. Those two teams met up last night, and uh, the Raiders kind of flexed their muscles in that game, didn't they? They did, Craig. You know, everyone knew Rushi had a lot of seniors coming back this year, and that they'd be a very strong team. And last night, uh, they really, uh, they really showed it. Uh, they played a great basketball game against Fort Laramie. Uh, their offense was good. They were clicking on all cylinders. They were hitting shots from the outside. They were pounding the ball inside. And uh, but most importantly, Craig, I think Coach Bramagen had to be very happy with the defensive effort. They held a very good Fort Laramie team to just 40 points. Uh, they out rebounded the Redskins by nearly a three to one margin. And uh, so Coach. Bremingen really had uh, the team playing well last night, and uh, I think you can continue to look for that the rest of the season. On the other hand of it, uh, Fort Lormie, you know, I think they're going to regroup, Craig. They're a good team. They've got a lot of good quality seniors on that team. Uh, they've got two big games this weekend, so Coach Britton has to put that game behind them. Uh, look forward to the Anna game Friday night, and then they got a big one with Lehman on Saturday. So uh, Fort Lormie will regroup. They'll be back, and, uh, you know, it'll be a good season for both teams. I agree with what you said on that defensive effort. I, I believe the Redskins had 12 points at halftime, and in that fourth quarter, I know uh, both teams started getting their subs in. So, uh, yeah. um, like I said, yeah. some good defense yeah. from them. Three of 18 shooting the first half for the Redskins. Wow. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the standings, see how they've changed from last week. I just starting to take shape a little bit, and uh, let's check them out. Still early, Craig, and like you said, they are starting to take shape a little bit. Uh, Jackson Center and Rushi both sitting at 2-0 in the league, 4-0 in the overall those two teams will square off next Tuesday night in a very big league battle at Rushi. Uh, Fort Laramie and Fairlawn both sitting at 2-1 and one, and at 1-2. One uh, Bakken's at one and two, and Anna and Houston both looking for their uh, first league wins of the season. Craig, yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how that uh, how that changes here in the next week. And and uh, like you said, we're just starting to get into that. All right, Ken. Well, let's uh, that's going to take care of our SCAL basketball tonight. Want to talk a little MAC basketball? Haven't hit on that conference a whole lot yet. Did talk to Coach Eric Rosenbeck over at St. Henry a couple weeks ago, but uh, it seems like that MAC always gets kind of a late start just because of so many teams playing football, don't they? Well, they get a late start because of football. Yes, for one, uh, they always have so many teams in the football playoffs that make deep tournament runs. But also in the MAC, typically they play all their non-league games first. A lot like you see at the college scene. Well, they'll play four or five non-league games, and then they'll, they'll get into the traditional MAC league schedule. So uh, it's hard to see the MAC standings take shape, probably Craig, uh, significantly until probably early middle of January. But it was really nice going over to Versailles, talking to the head coach of the Tigers, Scott McElhinney, along with his star Kyle Arns. Yeah, it's uh, they're a team that kind of I guess you could say they got a little bit of a late start too, uh, just because they did make the playoffs in football this year, and also Kyle Arns didn't play that first game against Salina, just coming off that injury. But uh, you and I got a chance to get over there earlier this week and talk to Coach McElhinney and Kyle Arns, ask him about the team this year and that injury. Let's check out the video and see what they had to say. Coach, you've got three games under your belt right now. You had two nice wins last weekend. Tell us about your team at this point in the season. Uh, I've been happy with the progression of the team. Uh, you know, we got a slow start um, because of the playoff run in football. Uh, so we had limited practice time before our, our first game. Um, we also were without uh, Kyle Arns for our first game, um, which adds a, a big part to our team. Um, but uh, Really, uh, a big jump from the first week to, to the second week, the, um, just by having a little bit of extra practice time. It seemed like getting an extra four days of practice in uh, really made a difference. I, I can see the team get, get so much better each and every day uh, of, of practice. I uh, had a real nice weekend last, last uh, weekend against uh, New Bremen and Covington, both home games. Um, you know, it was a very physical game Friday night against um, New Bremen, and uh, I thought our kids handled it pretty well and responded well. Tell us a little bit about your star, Kyle Arns. He's been uh, off for over a year now. He returned last weekend. Obviously very important to your team. But uh, fill us in a little bit on the status of his health and how the, you're progressing with his play. Well, first of all, health-wise, I think we're, we're finally turning the corner. Um, you know, when he got cleared to be able to go hard, uh, there'd be instances where he'd, he'd be able to go half a practice and then he would get sore from it. And they told him any time he gets sore to sit out. Um, and then he got to the point where he'd be able to go a full practice but maybe have to sit out the next day because of soreness in his leg. 
Um, but last week he, he was able to, to practice uh, three full practices, um, played Friday night with in, intentions of maybe him having to sit out on Saturday and uh, said the leg felt great Saturday morning, was able to play uh, back-to-back. So um, it's been pretty much uh, pain-free for the most part, and uh, hopefully we're, we've definitely turned the corner there. Let's talk about your senior guard Jace Bargy. Uh, Jace had a real nice weekend for you last weekend, as well as a contributing points, as well as assists. Uh, tell us about Jace's role on your team. Well, uh, you know, Jace is one of the experienced guys. I don't have, uh, you know, other than Kyle and, and Jace, the, the other two letter winners, um, you know, seen limited action at, at the varsity level uh, last year. So uh, Jace actually uh, came up for us his sophomore year toward our uh, the end of the year on our state run and gave us a lot of quality minutes off the bench, uh, filled in as a starter and, and a point guard last year when Kyle went down and uh, is really off to a good season so far this year, shooting the ball tremendously well and uh, provides a lot of leadership on the floor for us. You've got a wide range of classmen from freshmen to seniors making up your varsity squad. Tell us about the chemistry between these players and who else is important on your team. Well, we, we've got uh, great versatility. We've got uh, two seniors, played JV last year, and, and uh, Zach Steinbrenner and Justin Marshall. Uh, they're 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. They provide us some size and strength inside. Um, we also have Kyle Richling, who lettered last year, um, is, a, is a good guard who can take you off the dribble and also shoots it pretty well from the outside. Uh, Junior's playing, getting a lot of time right now. Uh, Brett McEldowney and um, Jared Niekamp give us some size, too, at 6'3". Both of them are, are versatile players, uh, can also shoot and, and put the ball on the floor. And um, freshman uh, Justin Arns right now is coming off the bench for us, giving us a lot of great minutes. And he, again, uh, we got a lot of guys who can shoot the three. He can shoot the three, too, and he can take you off the dribble. So um, we, we got a lot of versatility. Whether we want to go big, we can do that. Or whether we'd rather go quicker and smaller, we're able to, we're able to do that, too. You've got two games this week, and then you take a nine-day break before the uh, Versailles Holiday Tournament. Tell us how this break figures into your plans as far as schedule practices and such. Oh, uh, I, I really like it. it, it at first, I, I wasn't looking forward to it, but being that we had limited practice to start the season, um, we're pretty vanilla right now with what we're doing just so that we can do some things really well instead of putting our total package in right away and, um, you know, not being very good at, at, at anything. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to that break so we can add a few things um, uh, to, to our arsenal, a few things that we want to do to maybe speed the game up and, and to be able to spring, uh, spring some guys open offensively. We're here at Versailles High School with senior star Kyle Arns. Kyle, how tough was it taking a full year off and not being able to be competitive on the basketball court? Uh, it was really tough, you know, just watching it out there, watching the sport that you love and you can't go out and compete. Um, I'm very competitive, so it's really tough. And just the good thing that came out of that is learning at a coach's standpoint how to understand the game of basketball. Kyle, last weekend was a big weekend for you. Not only did you get back on the court, but you also scored your 1,000th point as a Versailles Tiger. How did you feel playing those games last weekend? Where did you feel a little rusty, or were you in good basketball shape? Oh, I'm still real rusty. Uh, I was really good, in really good shape around July. And then the stress on the bone happened, and I took a couple weeks off, like a month. And then after that, I was really out of shape, and I'm, I'm still trying to get into my mode yet and just working with the guys, getting our chemistry down, and we're getting there. A couple years ago, you were a sophomore. You helped bring the Versailles Tigers to the state championship game. What do you feel needs to come together for this Tiger team to make a similar run? We have everything that we need. Uh, we have the chemistry and everything. It's just a matter of coming together again. That team, we, didn't, we came together at the end of the year, and that's what helped us make the run. And I think we could do that again. All right, Ken, and that was Coach McEldowney and Kyle Arns over there at Versailles. Talked to them on Monday. Actually, on Tuesday, they played a pretty good Lehman team. Came out with a victory there, didn't they? Yeah, they did, Craig. They had a 15-point victory at Lehman. Uh, Lehman's got a very solid basketball team this year, Craig. And, uh, you know, Kyle Arns had a, had a big game over there again. But, uh, you know, the Lehman Cavaliers played them very tough. Yeah, we'll get a chance to see them at the end of January, I believe. Uh, Rushi visits Versailles. It's going to be a tough game. Yes, it will be. 
All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for our boys' talk. Got one more thing to get to before we close the show tonight, and that is that trivia question. Why don't you uh, give me the question again, and we'll check, uh, have the guys check on the telemetrics. Well, Craig, it was about Jackson Center girls' basketball tonight. It involves a few of the McEldowney boys were uh, potential answers there. So uh, who coached the Lady Tigers to a perfect season of 28-0 and a state championship in 1995? Was it Scott McEldowney? Roger McEldowney, Jerry Harmon, or Greg Gooding? All right, well, a lot of good names there. I'm going to check out the guys first back there on the on the Fish Report telemetrics. Guys, what do you got for answers? Anything? Yes, we've got plenty of things. Uh, it looks like it's Scott's big brother, Roger McEldowney, by a 2-1 to one margin. All right. Mm. Well, I tell you what, I got an interesting story on that. When we went to set up the interview with Coach Scott McEldowney at Versailles, I actually emailed Roger McEldowney at Versailles and said, hey, can I interview you about your boys' team this year? And he said, well, Craig, I think you're talking about my brother, Scott. But, yeah, they have practice tonight. You can come after practice and talk to them. So I, I, was, I had to clarify with some people, Roger, Scott, who coached what? And uh, I'm still a little confused. <laughs> but I think one of the things people told me was Roger was the guy that coached Jackson Center to their state championship. So, of course, I'm going to go with Roger. You're exactly right, Craig. The Versailles High School graduate, uh, one of his early years of coaching over at uh, Jackson Center, led the Lady Tigers to a perfect 28-0 season and a state championship. All right, well, that's good stuff, and that is a good way to end things for us tonight. Uh, we do want to say special thanks to uh, Coach Dosek from over at Jackson Center for joining us on the show tonight, as well as Coach McEldown and Kyle Arns. Ken and I and the crew, we're all going to take a little holiday break. Uh, we're going to take the next couple weeks off. going to be back on January 7th with another big show. So uh, until then, everyone, hope you have a, a great holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll, we'll see you on January 7th. Hey, you like the fish apart. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. For your latest news in high school sports, tuning in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report, hanging out the fish report.